do we have anything to fear along those lines? Absolutely. Uh, let me just say that if you were to rate how serious the, the strategic situations have been in the past few years, this would be above Iraq, this would be above Afghanistan, and this would be above Iran. Un little no notice to Americans, the Russians learned at the end of the first Gulf War that they couldn't, they didn't think they could deal with the United States uh, given the value and the quality of American precision conventional weapons. The Russians put into their doctrine a statement and have broadcast it very loudly that if the United States were to use precision conventional weapons against Russian troops, the Russians would be forced to respond with tactical nuclear weapons. They continue to state this. They practice this in their exercise. They've even had exercises that very closely paralleled what went on in Osatia where there is an independence movement, they intervene conventionally to put down the independence movement, uh, the United States and NATO responds with conventional airstrikes, they then respond with tactical nuclear weapons. It appears to me as if the Russians were preparing themselves to do that in this case. First of all, I think they believe the United States was going to intervene. At a news conference on Sunday, a deputy national security advisor said, we have noted that the Russians have introduced two SS-21 medium-range ballistic missile launchers into South Ossetia. Now, let me say a little footnote about those. They're both conventional and nuclear. Uh, they have a relatively small conventional warhead, however. So the military significance, if they were to be conventional, was almost trivial compared to what the Russians could deliver with, with the aircraft that they were using to strike the Georgians. I think this was a signal. I think this was uh, an implementation on their part of their doctrine. Uh, they, it clearly appears as if they expected the United States to do what they had practiced in their exercises. In fact, this morning, uh, the Russians had an air defense exercise in the southern part of Russia that borders Georgia, uh, in which they it was practicing shooting down incursion aircraft that were incursion into Russia. Uh, they were prepared for the United States to intervene, and I think they were prepared, or at least they were wanting to show the United States that their doctrine of the use of tactical nuclear weapons if the U.S. attacks was serious, uh, and they needed to take, the, the United States needs to take Russia very seriously. We're talking to Colonel Sam Gardner about this war that is taking place. Would you call it a war, Colonel Gardner? Well, you know, I, I, I love that term, that, and I wish I'd invented it. It's called frozen conflicts. It is an, a resolution of a conflict that's been around for 17 years. Uh, it was pushed off center by the Georgians. Uh, even the Georgians were reluctant to declare war. They declared a state of emergency. Uh, certainly the Russians haven't declared war. In fact, I guess I would say, Amy, you know, uh, with our war on terrorism, I don't even know if there's a definition of war anymore. Um, probably is best to call it a very serious conflict that could have been escalated. And the significance of the pipeline that is there? Well, the United States, uh, beginning about 10 years ago, obviously saw the vulnerability of the flow of oil out of the Persian Gulf. So the United States pushed very hard to set up a pipeline that went from Baku in Azerbaijan, taking out the Caspian Sea oil to a port in Turkey, Sehan. Uh, that oil pipeline carries about 1% of the world's oil supply. Um, two weeks ago, that pipeline was blown up uh, on the, in the Turkish uh, area by the Kurdish rebels that the Turks are fighting. Uh, there were reports that the Russians had bombed this over the weekend. Uh, reports this morning, however, say, suggest that there hasn't been an interruption, except that uh, Azerbaijan has shut off flow in the pipeline. 
so this this interferes with uh, uh, a major flow of oil uh, to the economies of the West. It's an important important source of the oil flow. Colonel Gardner, I also wanted to ask you about the presidential candidates' uh, responses to the conflict, uh, Senator Barack Obama and John McCain. Uh, the report coming out um, about John McCain's uh, uh, advisor, Schooneman, uh, who right. helped a U.S. firm win a Georgian energy um, firm deal while lobbying for Georgia's NATO membership. I must say that uh, I have not heard a lot of good words from the McCain campaign about how to deal with this. It, it's painful that the, the standard answer one gets is the testosterone-based foreign policy that we've seen for the last eight years. This is a very complex situation. And John McCain has said earlier that he wants to throw Russia out of the G8. That is absolutely the worst thing the United States could do. Russians have been saying, and the White House has not been listening, we are a major player, and you have to listen to us. This is the way the president said the Chinese are major players, and we now listen to them. The Russians have been saying that. Uh, the White House has ignored that. I also would say, on the other hand, uh, that this is one of those situations uh, where Obama's talk about it is probably not a good solution either. Uh, the United States made some errors when it left the impression with the Georgians that our support somehow meant they were free to undertake this operation. That was clearly uh, a bad uh, idea that we communicated to with them. Uh, the other thing that is, is significant here is there is the Israeli's dimension to the problem. Israel has been training and supplying uh, the army of Georgia. Uh, it's caused some tensions within Israel because there are those who believe that this just encourages the Russians to provide conventional arms to the Iranians. Um, Israel has talked about it over the weekend and decided not to stop uh, providing arms to the Georgians. Uh, it isn't over. Uh, there are a lot of strategic things that are going to fall out of this. Probably the most important is uh, that it's not now Iraq, Afghanistan, and Iran. It's now Russia, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Iran that a new president's going to have to deal with. Colonel Sam Gardner, I want to thank you for being with us. We'll certainly continue to follow this conflict. Uh, Colonel Gardner, retired Air Force colonel, has taught strategy and military operations at the National War College, um, as well as the Air War College and the Naval War College. This is Democracy Now! If you'd like a copy of today's show, you can go to our website. Tomorrow, we will take on the issue of the federal judge ruling that the U.S. government owes a group of Native Americans close to half a billion dollars, so they'd ask for $47 billion. We'll talk to the lead plaintiff, Eloise Cobell. We will also look at what happened in the vote in Bolivia. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Berkshoof, Hugo Caduce, Aaron Mata, Angelique Comet, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Honey Masood, Robbie Karen. Happy birthday to Jeffrey Hagerman. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.